Father, I just uh, pray, Lord, that you uh, bless John, Lord, as he brings your word this evening, Lord. Father, open our ears and our hearts, Lord, and speak to our spirits, Lord, through your word, Father, and teach us new things. Father, we just commit this time to you now, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I'll possess the land, the Jesus' covenant. The last time we met, God gave a land to Abraham and his descendants. Number two, who are Abraham's descendants? Number three, the natural descendants are told to inherit the land. Number four, Israel fails to inherit the land. And number five, we made the point that the law cannot inherit the land. Now we need to go on. Number six, there are nations living in the land. Deuteronomy 7, 1. Deuteronomy 7, 1. Please note. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the um, per Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. The nations that possess the land are larger and stronger than us. They're not going to give up land easily. They've been in, in, in it for a long time. But remember, God is going to bring you into your land. And God will drive out the nations before you. So we need to ask if we believe that God will do it. All we have to is is possess it and believe it is uh, uh, and, and, and believe it is uh, ours. And the great problem is it's through unbelief that we miss out promises of God. Mm. Number seven, Jesus is our Joshua. Joshua 1 verses 2 to 6. Please Kate. Joshua 1 verses 2 to 6. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan now, and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land which I swear unto the fathers to give, to give them. Even those who occupy the land know that God has given us possession of it and they shall be wiped out we must watch for that for they will surely try and bring us 
to a compromise solution. solution. Joshua 9.24, please start. Joshua 9.24. So they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, therefore we were, we were very much afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. This is the Gibeonites who made a covenant with Israel and the, the fault was Israel because they didn't pray about it. Mm. That's right. All things are ours. They all come to us because our Joshua, Yahushua, has taken them. God gave them to him on our behalf. We are victorious in him. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 to 23, please share. 1 Corinthians. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ's, Christ is God's. It, it, is it surprising that Paul cries out in absolute wonder to Corinthians 9.15, Thanks be unto God, yeah. for is is unspeakable gift. Mm. Now, number eight. What was the purpose of Israel's deliverance? God delivered Israel and us for a special purpose. That purpose was that they were to be we are to be a special people, yeah. a holy nation unto him. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Through them, and through us, he plans to demonstrate his glorious light and perfection to the nations that are in darkness. That's the whole point. He desired that they, and us, enter into an inheritance of similar, similar splendour to the Garden of Eden. Now, what have we done so far? <coughs> Let's have a look. Number nine. We are the children of Abraham. Why? Why? The scripture tells us. Die. 
come on. I told you last week. Because we believe. Because we believe. He's the father of all those who believe. Number two, <clears throat> we've been taken out of Egypt and are on a journey to the promised land. Yeah? Number three, the promised land was a physical place for Israel. be a spiritual place mm. because it's the New Testament not the Old Testament mm. number four God has gone before us And he has taken all the land. All we have to do is occupy it. Mm. Number five. The only way is to stand in the Lord's victory. Not only do I speak in tongues, I write in tongues. Okay. And proclaim by faith, mm. that is ours. Mm. The question must arise in everyone's mind. Yeah. I stress this. Where is the land? Yeah. Many teachers at this stage give the scripture 2 Corinthians 7.14. anything to him of you I am not ashamed but as we spoke 2 Corinthians 2 Chronicles 2 Chronicles 7.14 what's looking to say? I, 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 I was right that time <laughs> yeah you were right put that in writing you were <laughs> you were I was right yeah. somewhere in the um, there um what was that again? Old Testament <laughs> Two, two Chronicles, what was it? Two Chronicles, seven, fourteen. Right. Right, okay. Genesis, yeah. Chronicles. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you shall like the Corinthians one, do Right. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear will heal their land. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Mm. But it was given in the Old Testament. Yeah. 
to the nation of Israel. So, let's break it down. If my people... Yes, we are God's people. Because Amen? Yeah. Mm. Who are called by my name. Yep. We're called Christians. Mm. And we're called by the name of Christ. Mm. Will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven mm. and I will forgive their, 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 their sin. It's a little bit different. <coughs> 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9. Please die. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We must confess our sins. If we confess our sins to the Lord, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins mm. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness mm. and heal their land. Which is what it yeah. finishes off with. Yeah. So, we have had so much to say about the Israelites taking a physical land that our land is not physical. Nevertheless, we have a war on our hands in order to take the land which the enemy doesn't want to give up. So here is the spiritual warfare that we've heard so much about. We must constantly fight in order to take our land. The land that has been under the sway of the devil for so long. Everyone has a land to take. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. Please, Sheila. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, Do, oh, sorry. we understand casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm. This is the giants we have to face. Mm. Where is the land? It's our mind. Mm. Mm. This is the true spiritual warfare. Our mind, our will, our, our, our emotions. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Throughout our life, we've been taught wrongly. Is this is the battle we are engaged in? <coughs> the weapons are at our disposal mm. are not carnal but mighty through God <coughs> what are our weapons? Neville Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 6. <laughs> 17 and 18 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. There are two offensive weapons listed here. The Word of God and prayer. But seriously, there is only one offensive weapon. We can say the Word of God. Yet it is able to pull down strongholds, cast down imaginations, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought. It was by the word that we were saved. <coughs> Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, According, according, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Okay. It is by the word they are, we are washed daily. Like the priests of the Old Testament <coughs> in the tabernacle of Moses, who had to wash in the laver before they ministered to God. Mm. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Where are we up to? Mm. Husbands, love your wives. Is that what I yep. yeah. yeah. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. We read the word and it washes us. <coughs> now, let's pause it for a second. It is the word that is our weapon with the capability of transforming us. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Mm. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul says in Romans, he says, be not conformed, but be transformed. It's a metamorphosis, sort of caterpillar to a butterfly, and literally by the renewing of our minds. Paul says in, in another place, Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The strongholds that we have been taught are just that. We have been taught from birth various strongholds. If we look at them like this, We need to get rid of these strongholds. If 
we've been taught that you don't get something for nothing. In fact, my grandfather used to say, you don't get out for now. But Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, we don't have to do anything, just believe. The second thing we've been taught, that destroys that one. The second three thing we've been taught is that Christ was born on the 25th of December. <laughs> Luke 2 8, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Ridiculous. Because December the 25th would be very cold indeed. And your sheep wouldn't be out. And therefore there wouldn't be a, um, a place for Mary and Joseph to stay. So it, what, he, he wasn't born. as we believe. We've been taught neither a lender nor a borrower be. But that's not correct. In fact, Luke 6.35 Please share that. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For He is kind to the unthankful yeah. and evil. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amazing. Shakespeare. Right. And we celebrate Easter, or Passover, with hot cross buns. <laughs> mm. Very nice. Jeremiah 7.18. <laughs> Jeremiah 7.18. Please, never. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the Queen of Heaven, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Jeremiah 44:19, please, never. Jeremiah 44:19. Yeah. <laughs> 19. Mm. The women also said, And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes for her, mm. to worship her, and pour out drink offerings to her without our husband's permission? Mm. Exactly. Cool. And they used to put a cup in the top mm. to make sure that they were well cooked. And we can go on. I mean, yeah. there are so many things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fact that uh, three wise men, <laughs> but it doesn't say yeah. in the Bible. 
it says wise men. Well, it's three gifts that this. Yeah. So it's. They all have to yeah. cluster together, there's hundreds of them. And so on and so forth. Yeah. We, we, we can go on. But we must understand that the Bible tells us that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind <coughs> that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Any questions? Romans 12. 2. We ask you to bless this food now. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.